Well, again, I want to say it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. I want to give the Lord all the praise, and honor, and glory for everything that uh, we're uh, doing this morning. We're able to be in a, a wonderful building where that we can uh, stay comfortable and we can hear God's word. We want to go to the scriptures here this morning and turn to page number, I mean, uh, to chapter 24 of the book of Matthew, and which it's a end time prophecy of, of a lot of things and a lot of these things that we we are seeing probably are uh, if we knew the whole thing we're probably saying hey it's it's closer it's close but anyway we can't uh, do a whole lot of predicting about that but anyway in chapter 24 of the uh, Bible of Matthew uh, verse 1 and this is this is the destruction of the temple and the signs before the end and the end that he's talking about in this is i believe it's the church age when jesus speaks to them about the things that he sees it i mean it's going to happen i think he's talking about the church age because then he'll deal with the jew but anyway we'll see and jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came unto him to show him the building and the temple. Now I want to show you something here. When he went, when he left out of the temple, uh, Jesus then left the city, crossed the Kidron Valley, and went east to Jerusalem to the Mount of Olives, from which he could look down on the temple courtyard. And so here's where he's at, and he's he's on the Mount of Olives there, and he's telling them these things. But he says. After this, he says, Jesus said unto them, See ye not all of these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall right. not be thrown down. And he was up over this uh, over this, uh, on this ridge that uh, goes around uh, Jerusalem, and he was looking down, and he said, You see all of these buildings and all of this? And of course, we know this morning that the uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and him come in and tore that place all to pieces. Mm -hmm. And he says here that there not be one stone left upon another. And it was true because they they had heard rumors that uh, that the Jews had put uh, gold in between mm -hmm. the stones, and and that was where they were secure. And so they took it from the top and just broke it all to pieces and throw it down. And of course, I don't, I don't think they found any gold, but the thing of it is, it fulfilled the prophecy that Jesus had told them about that there wouldn't be one stone left upon another. And this morning, you know, Jesus told them that then, and Jesus is still, he's speaking to us, not as he spoke to them, but he speaks to us in a, in a voice of the Spirit, and he's telling us, you know, uh, hey, things things are not like they should be. Mm -hmm. And things may get a little worse, but the thing of it is, we, as God's people, we need to just depend upon him and not get worried and not get scared and not get to the point where we, that we don't want to come to church and mm -hmm. we don't do this because, listen, that's what the, a lot of this is all about is to keep God's people out of church and quit and, and where that they cannot worship God like they should. Amen. And this morning, we just need to take uh, a new hold on everything and say, well, we're going to be there and we're going to, we're going to try to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So he said here in verse 3, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, tell us these three things. When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed, that's the message this morning mm -hmm. to us to take heed, be aware of what is going on in your life, in this country, in this world, and you take heed to this because listen, uh, Jesus told them there to take heed, and right. it goes for us the same way. He said, take heed, that no man deceive you. And right. Over in Colossians 2, I'm going to read just a few scriptures there for you. Uh, and in verse 8 it says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiment of this world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 
and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and powers, and whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. And we know this morning that what he's talking about here is, he's saying, you be aware, you always, you always, and I say it again, you always need to be aware. Amen. You need to understand what is going on. And the way that you can understand it is staying close to the Lord Jesus Christ and praying to the Father through Him and that the Holy Spirit would speak to your soul. And listen, do not, do not shake your head at what the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Because Amen. He, he speaks to you that are saved. And, and He says He dwells within and He speaks with you. And so uh, when Jesus when Jesus hears his prayer, he takes it to the Father, and the Father answers it through the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, we need to be aware of what's going on. So back in our lesson this, that now, he said here uh, in verse uh, 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ right. and shall deceive many. Now, Amen. I, I used to think that uh, uh, that uh, people would just actually say they are Christ, but what they're doing, I think, in this is I am Christ, but they're pointing to Christ and they're putting out a a uh, message that's not true. Mm -hmm. And listen, I want, I want to read something to you if I can find it real easy over in the book of John. John 5, and look at uh, verse 39. Back 30, 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. Mm -hmm. Talking, He's talking to the Jew. Mm -hmm. And I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him will ye, be, him ye will receive. And he's saying here that many are going to come in Jesus' name, and they're going to, either they're going to say that I'm Christ, because I know I know the Antichrist is when he sits in the temple, he's going to declare himself to be God. Mm -hmm. And he but before that people are there's going to be men come into this country preaching and saying, I'm Christ, mm -hmm. or I'm going to point you to Christ, and they're deceivers, and you know that they're deceivers. This morning, anyone here knows that if a man comes in here and says, Hey, I'm Christ. You know what he is. Mm -hmm. And so he says here, you search the scriptures and you be aware of the things that are going on. He says here in verse 44, how can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust Jesus here, Jesus is saying here that I'll not accuse you. And listen, people, this morning, and he's, he makes this very clear in the scriptures. He does not accuse us of sin. This, those, that are, those that are saved, he does not accuse, but he does this. What, he takes our prayers to the Father, and he presents himself with the prayer and the, and God sees the, the blood and he cannot refuse to hear that and to honor that prayer. And so he don't accuse us uh, in the way that uh, uh, like, but Moses was the one he's talking about here. Moses accused him of that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, here it is. He says uh, here in verse uh, in verse uh, 45, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me, but if ye believe not his writing, how shall you believe my word? And this, this is, it goes right back to this thing here it, it, that, that tells us that we 
need to be aware. We need to be aware of what we're hearing uh, in the world, and and and, in, and and even people that are uh, that are called preachers. Mm -hmm. And listen, I, I was looking this more other day, and this black man that's running down there in Florida is a preacher, and you would not believe some of the stuff that he's putting out. Mm -hmm. As a preacher, people, and he's running for he's running for Congress, and so we need to be aware of what's going on in this country. Now, let me get back to the lesson for here in verse six, and ye shall hear of wars. Well, let's look at read five. For many will come in my name, saying, "I am Christ," and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. And ye shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places see that you be not troubled uh, and, and, and and this is this is what he's saying to them as he as he announces the things to this nation and what's going to happen to him he's in he's encouraging us he's encouraging them listen don't be troubled Amen. Because listen, you have you've got a you've got a father in heaven that has done everything, built everything, and you know this morning I was thinking about and yesterday about the sun. Uh, the sun it just keeps coming up every morning. Mm -hmm. It keeps coming up every morning, and when he said. It's good, it's good, and listen, it don't get out of orbit, it stays right there. You can sit you can you can set your clock with us by and you can make your calendars by. Listen, he done these things and why should we in any way think that he won't take care of us? Amen. So here again he says, For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes and divers in different places. All of these are the beginning of sorrow and right. so this this don't s sound encouraging but the thing of it is we don't know what's going to happen uh in, in in this time frame where that uh what's going to happen because he says then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and this morning if it, if it happens to the jew uh, or if it happens to the Gentile, we could face these problems, and and I don't know what I don't know how the, the world is going to go, but I do know one thing: this thing will happen, and I don't like I say I don't know if it happens to the Jew or the Gentile or both. But the thing of it is, we've not got a whole lot to look forward to as far as as things getting better according to God's word, but we have this assurance that the Lord Jesus Christ and God is watching over us yeah, and, and we're his children people uh whether or not uh you understand this or not but you know what you look towards your children with love yeah, and you want you want to do whatever you can for them you want to hold their hand when they're crying or when they fall and get hurt you want to put a band-aid on it or something you want to take care of them. and that's the same way it is with god and us amen morning. Hey, we're his children, and so we need we need not to be uh, afraid. And this should be encouraging in in the fact that that God is on the throne and that God is Amen. the one that's watching over us. And He says, then in verse ten, and then shall many be offended, right, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And this even comes down I, I, I've seen it uh, read some about brother hating brother sister hating sister and you know all of this and that's what's going to happen and he says in verse 11 and many false <clears throat> and many false prophets shall rise Amen. and shall deceive many and so again here when he says that they're going to they're going to come and say I'm Christ right here's, here's your here's your false prophets they're they're coming on and they're here they're not coming they're here mm -hmm. and listen uh, uh, if you don't think that they're here I mean, Diane was talking about it this morning watch your television watch your television and some of these programs that they're putting on now they are changing over to a homosexual right. encounters uh, on that because they're afraid they're going to lose uh, people watching them. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So that's the thing that's going on right now. And listen, it's been going on for a long time, but now it's come plumb out in the open and it's slapping all the people in the right. face and, and saying, here I am. And so this morning it's coming and we need to be aware of the fact that things is not going to get no better because when, when the world puts its approval upon things like this, there's no reason, there's no way it can get any better because God despises it. Amen. He hates it. And listen, the only thing that we can do is say, Lord, just be with us because uh, we, we've got to live in this stuff. And so uh, that's, that's, what's, that's what the thing is, is getting a, a, about. Because he said here in verse 12, and because iniquity or lawless shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right. Here when he's saying it's iniquity, and, 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 and I guess it's referring to lawlessness, how, how bad is it now with this lawlessness? Hey, they've taken whole cities of, and, and, uh, and burn them and uh, kill people and, and blow up places. Uh, listen, it's lawless. And, and this is, he, they ask him, when shall these times be? When are they going to come? Well, I think, if I can understand anything at all, that we're in it. We're in it. And so we might as well just to, to kind of uh, hump up, as the old saying is, and take, get ready for it because it's, it's on the way. Now he says here in verse 13, But he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. And, uh, and look in the... Uh, 10, I believe it's, I got a, a, a here on 10, 22. I want to, I want to read something to you. Uh, Matthew 10, 22. I think I hope that's right. Ten. 10, 22. Let me see what it says. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. But when Amen. they persecute you in this city, flee ye to another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. And so when you see these things, when you see these things, know that, that the, the coming of the Lord is at hand. And I... I believe here when he's talking about this that he's done the rapture is done happening. He's coming back to to set up to Jew, with the Jews and set up his kingdom. But I, I don't it don't specify. But anyway, and and he, and in verse twenty four, and the disciples is not above his master, nor the servant above his lord. It is enough for the disciples that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Be Beelzebub or devil, how much more shall they call them of his household? Right. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak in light. I want to, let me turn over and read. I want to read the rest of this. Ye hear in the ear that preach ye upon the housetop. And listen, uh, you know, as I was thinking, as we read this, uh, that's, what's, uh, that's what Brother Kenyon is doing. Right to, uh, last Saturday, that, you know, going out and preaching it from the, from the, from the sidewalks and, and, and anywhere they can preach it. And that's what, that's what is, 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 is necessary. Amen. And he says, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. So back in our lesson now, we want to get back to the set. Uh, verse 24 of, of chapter 24. He says, Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter but within they are full of extortion and excess and, and he was just he was merely he was merely saying to them about the the graves and all that where that they they painted them white and he's he's comparing them to them and, and trying to cover up their sins 
by going around and, and, and talking uh, and saying that they're uh, doing good works and all this. And he's, he compares them to the uh, outside of a, a cup and a platter, but within they're full of ex extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, clean first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. And he just merely saying this morning, hey, it's not the body, it's not the body that you clean up and try to present as a uh, gospel, but it's the, the, the inside, the spirit, the heart, and this, and this is for this is where that uh, so much of works and things is, is, is produced uh, by people trying to put on a good show, trying to make a, a, a statement saying that, hey, I'm walking uh, in, the, in the footsteps of God. Listen, they're deceived. Uh, they're not doing it. And he, he calls them Pharisees here, or uh, blind Pharisees. And, and so they don't know what they're doing. Here, woe, in verse 27, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, and he's placing here, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, of all uncleanness. And this morning, he's trying to uh, again warn us about things that's coming in the name of Christ or people. And he's, he's, he's got a condition here where that uh, they're cleaning their out, upside, outside out. They're saying, oh, I do good works and I do this and I do this and I do this. And they want to come in and, and, and the first thing you know, they are uh, got sin in the church or mm -hmm. and, and, and they're trying to take over. And listen, this is what... This is what he's talking about here this morning is they, they're, they're full of dead men's bones and, and that, that sepulcher is, it was a graveyard and they, they put them in these big things and, uh, and uh, block buildings and caves and things and paint over them and paint them white where that they would look beautiful. And so he said, that's the way you are. And mm -hmm. so they, these are lost people. And he said here, he said here, uh, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within are ye of hypocrisy and iniquity. And so this is, this is, a, this is a, 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 the, the condition that the, that the Jews, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees were all in. And these are the ones that persecuted Jesus all the time, every time that he would try to say anything or they would question him and make it out like they was interested in what he was saying. And, and they wanted to put him in a trick bag and, and cause him to, to uh, they could say that he lied or something like this. And, 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 and they, they said he lied, uh, even uh, raising up the, uh, uh, that building that was torn down in three days. But see, they don't understand. They don't understand that he was talking about his body. Mm -hmm. And so here we see, Woe unto you, scribes, in verse 29, Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tomb of the prophets and garnish the sufferers of, which, of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the day of our fathers, we would not have partakers with them in the blood and the prophets. So they're saying, Hey, if I was if I would have been back there back with my father and him, I wouldn't I wouldn't have took part of this, but what did Jesus say? Wherefore, in verse verse 31, wherefore ye be witness unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your father. And so he's saying here, you continue doing what your father was doing, right. killing the prophets, calling them false prophets, uh, and doing all that they could to keep them from uh, being a servant for the Lord. And so here, ye servants, you, and here he said, ye servants, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Right. And so this this really shows you what hell is going to be full of. And uh, uh, I have no desire for it. Uh, here, wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, 
And so this is this is this was our out their 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 future, and it's just like we was reading over a while ago. The, some of the things that's fixing it come to pass. It's our future too. Amen. And all we can do is just say, Lord, uh, I want to serve you, and if it, if it takes me dying, that's fine. But listen, I want to serve you as best I can till something happens. And so here, here on this right here, after he told them what they're going to do, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the to the blood of Zacharias, son of Bar Barchasus, whom he slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killeth the prophets, and stoneth them which are sent unto thee, how oft would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wing, and you would not. Right. And I, I, I've, I've seen this. I've seen the chickens, I've seen the hens, and they'd start clucking to them, and they'd run, get up under their wings and everything. And I've heard even in these prairies out there, some of those birds and all would gather their birds when the fire was coming, and it would burn and kill the bird, and the little ones would, would be safe. But it's just, a, it's just, it's, it's, it's something here, and how often, he says here, how often would I um, uh, gather you, and how often has he uh, put out the call to people through the preaching of God's word and they reject it. Right. And, and so this is the thing. He says here, behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Amen. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, and this is what the Jews will say. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I think I think this is this is when they look upon uh, upon Jesus and they believe. And I think this is when they say, "Blessed is the name of the Lord." But, but it's 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 just my opinion. So anyway, that's our lesson this morning. And I, I've done a lot of reading, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure of this that God will return to the Lord. Amen. And this morning, it may have been very boring. It may be very encouraging. I hope it was encouraging. I hope it, it put turn wheels in your brain that you can uh, get off to your side and, and say, hey, uh, I want to study a little bit more about this because uh, it's God's work. Thank you all for listening.